French national anthem. waves the French flag here as the boxers the boxers now stand at attention uh, for this tribute to the referee we're told for the referee was played and Marcello Bertini is the referee so another European custom the referee gets an anthem as well as the uh, two fighters uh, when they are from uh, different countries as is the case here tonight and the fighters will now have their gloves uh, put on in the ring here at the Pavillon de Paris the referee for this about, as we mentioned, Marcello Bertini, and the judges are from Switzerland and Spain. Aimé Lachaud from Switzerland, Lorenzo Sanchez Villar from Spain. And we're looking now at the referee, Marcello Bertini. The same scoring applies in this bout, of course, as we mentioned at the beginning of the heavyweight fight, a 10-point must system. The winner of each round uh, getting uh, 10 points, the loser a 0 to 9 points. A referee and two judges will score. And while the boxers uh, put on the uh, gloves here that were brought into the ring sealed. They are eight ounce gloves and uh, their corner men are now allowed to put them on in uh, full view here. And while they are doing that, we're going to go away for, for a message and we'll be right back with this championship bout live from Paris. Of the big four auto companies, who backs their cars better for 12 months or 12,000 miles? AMC, Chrysler, GM, or Ford? Well, they all cover the engine and drivetrain. But what about shock absorbers? Brake linings. Clutch linings. Free loaner car. Only AMC and Chrysler. Hoses and belts, only AMC and GM. But AMC keeps going. Wiper blades, light bulbs, spark plugs, wheel alignment, wheel balancing. Align headlights, adjust carburetor, adjust distributor, adjust brakes, adjust clutch, adjust transmission bands, adjust and tighten belts, tighten nuts and bolts, plus trip interruption protection. And AMC has a plan to give you a free loan a car if guaranteed repairs take overnight. AMC promises to fix or replace any part except tires that is defective or wears out under normal use and service during the first 12 months or 12,000 miles. Only AMC backs you this completely. Gil Clancy, the manager of the champion Rodrigo Valdez, and a man who has uh, handled and continues to handle many of the top fighters in boxing, including heavyweight George Foreman, the great veteran Amy o. Griffith, young Harold Weston, a welterweight who is on the card here tonight. And uh, Clancy, uh, as Larry Merchant indicated earlier, it says that uh, his man is in no way affected by the broken right index finger. It is right at the extremity of that finger. It is not in the punching position. And uh, we do not expect that to be a factor here at all tonight. Watching him in workouts, Larry, he was sure doing plenty of hitting. You know, uh, oh, you, you know, you have to wonder how lucky Valdez is. Uh, might be the only way he can lose this fight if he uh, goes into the ropes and garrets himself. Because, uh, <laughs> because uh, what happened when he got injured, uh, the 
car, the taxi that uh, had the accident, was a tax was owned by a cousin, and he had bought the car for the cousin, and the cousin had neglected to take any insurance out on it. <laughs> well, fortunately, it worked out all right for him, and we asked uh, Gil during the week uh, what exactly uh, the therapy involved was to get the hand back in shape following the accident. He had a very serious injury to his right hand. Three fingers were broken. The index finger had a compound fracture, but after months of extensive physiotherapy at the Rusk Institute in New York, under the uh, guidance of uh, Dr. Nancy Kester, his right hand is as good as new. I certainly wouldn't want to be hit by it. Again, remember, there will be no three knockdown rule in this fight. The fight can be stopped uh, only at the referee's uh, discretion, no matter how many times a man is knocked down in a round. He cannot be uh, saved by the end of a round. If he is down, the count will continue after the three minutes is up, and then the bell would ring if he gets up for the count of ten. If he doesn't, well, it's all over. Disqualification for deliberate headbutting is something that does occur sometimes under WBC rules, and uh, the, the feeling was that before this fight that that could be a rule that may come into play. When Colin fought in New York a few years ago against Griffith, the, uh, the people at the Garden started calling him Dirty Max because he used uh, his head to such advantage. He's an old soccer player, and uh, he knows how to use his head. <laughs> That's from Max Cohen is 37 wins, nine losses, nine ties. He is 35 years old and uh, number two in both the World Boxing Council and WBA ratings, a two-time French champion. Five, eight and a half, weighed in today at 158 pounds. Valdez, 56 victories, 35 knockouts. Four losses, two draws. And he is 30 years of age from Cartagena, Colombia. 5'10", and weighed in at 159 pounds today. Now there is ready to go, looking right over to our broadcast position with what seems to be a continuous smile on his face. We noticed that all week here, watching him work out. As long as that first fight uh, turned the ring into a, something like the Argonne Forest from World War I, uh, we might note, uh, in addition to Valdez's broken hand, that this fight was scheduled for a year ago, and uh, mysteriously, uh, a few hours before the fight, uh, Cohn came up with an elbow injury, and it had to be canceled. Valdez well, has been fighting since 1963. A long distinguished career, he won the title from Benny Briscoe, a vacated WBC title in May of 1974. And he successfully defended three times. Public address announcer making his Introduction to the fighters here at the Pavillon de Paris, approximately 5,000 in attendance and 7,000 capacity. Max Cohn, who runs a restaurant with his wife, kind of a luncheonette bar called Shea Max, as you might expect here in Paris. Gil Clancy said his toughest fight was the first one against Emil Griffith. Griffith, they lost a decision back in 1971. He'll make $60,000 tonight. The champion is guaranteed $70,000. We've got all this. Go ahead, Larry. We've got all the romance languages covered here tonight. We've got French, we've got Spanish in one corner. Uh, we've got an Italian official, but I don't think uh, they're going to be making love in there. No, this figures to be another war. The, the style of Max Cohn is to come straight ahead at full punches. He's a good boxer. His manager, Roger Ben Said, uh, calls him a very intelligent fighter. I expect that he will attempt to counterpunch, wait for opening. And uh, Valdez, on the other hand, uh, with more power than Cohn, but likewise a very good boxer. We can listen to the instructions from referee Marcello Bertini. And uh, as a good Italian would, a lot of hand gesturing that probably served a good purpose since he's uh, speaking to a Colombian and a Frenchman. And uh, we're ready to go here with round one. Tim Ryan and Larry Merchant at ringside of the Pavillon de Paris. First round of this 15 round, scheduled for 15 rounds, world middleweight championship fight that really figures to be a good one and we had a dandy to start our card on NBC this afternoon Ernie Shavers decisioning Henry Clark on the right of your screen in red trunks the champion Valdez in white trunks Max Cohen 
and an early hush comes over the crowd here in the opening seconds of round one. As you saw in our pre-fight show, Cohen has kind of a, a mix of fans here in Paris and throughout France. Some of them love him, to others he's kind of an anti-hero. And he feels that if he can win this championship tonight, that uh, that'll make everybody love him. This fight is being televised throughout Latin America, so there are plenty of Colombian fans and other Latin Americans who are hoping that uh, their man, Valdez, will retain his title and force the inevitable fight with Carlos Monzon. That opportunity could be Max Cohen's with a victory here tonight. We have a minute left in round one. Valdez, an explosive kind of a fighter. He will fight a very controlled, contained kind of a fight and then suddenly, without any warning at all, will really unleash himself. We said one minute left, uh, we meant one minute in. So we're now about halfway through round one. That's correct. Crossing right by Valdez, Cohen saw it just at the last instant. We watched Cohen in the gym, he is very quick, a very good defensive fighter. Cohen got a rise from the crowd. Valdez with 35 knockouts. Cohen with 16. So they both can take him out with this 160-pound middle weight. Clock Moyen, as I tried to say at the beginning of the fight. We're in the uh, final minute of round one. Valdez grazing the cheekbone on the right side of Max Cohen's face. Thirty seconds. Valdez with a slight height advantage. He's five ten. Cohen is five eight and a half. Ten seconds remaining in round one. What's your name, kid? Uh, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Another Louis Armstrong. <laughs> okay, Louis, let's see if you're as good as your name. When you've got a well-known name, people expect a lot. We've got a beer named after Milwaukee, the city that means beer. Old Milwaukee, it's a tough name to live up to. But Old Milwaukee tastes as great as its name. We're going to prove that Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. First, listen to an unshaven face using an ordinary credit card. Now we'll shave the left side with foam, the right, with Edge. With Edge's protective lubrication, we pressed harder to shave closer than foam. Now listen to the foam side. Then listen to the Edge side. Foam. Edge. Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. Of this 15 round middleweight championship fight, uh, Timmy Max has a cut in a very unusual place underneath the chin. We asked about uh, Max Cohen getting cut because of that high forehead of his, and that's uh, being kind. Uh, he said uh, that uh, he's never had a problem with cuts. He's very thick-skinned and does not uh, have a history of being cut easily. But as you pointed out, uh, he's got one under his chin. Indeed, an unusual spot. Round two, Cohen going to the body, and there's that explosive power of Valdez. As soon as he felt the attack of Cohen to the body, he let go with a combination, but did not uh, score heavily, landing on the arms of the challenger from France. Rodrigo Valdez, the black man in red trunks, Max Cohen in white. Overhead right, then Valdez landed with a left hook. Go 
good left up to the body by Valdez scoring, and he just threw a right uppercut right through the arms of Cole. Two good tough punches from Valdez here in round two. First round, both uh, fighters really kind of get trying to get the pace of the fight as usually happens. Nobody taking command in the first round. Valdez scoring the heavier punches here in round two. A long left jab got a piece of Valdez. He just missed with that left hook. Cohen uh, backing up. Good overhand right from Cohen to the chin of Valdez. They're looking to come back. Seems that when Valdez gets stung, that's when he explodes on his own, Larry. There you saw Cohen's very good left hand. It's, it's greatly respected in this division. During his workout, there was the single most impressive punch that we noticed. A very fast left hook. We'll be watching for that. Valdez knows about it, you can be sure. Cohen trying to fight inside. Duke Clancy did confide in some friends before the fight that he expected that Cohen would get Valdez in some trouble in, inside of the first seven rounds of that left hook. Valdez throwing punches after the bell. We don't know whether he heard it or not, but the round is over. And that gets some whistles. Max Cohen uh, took a little punishment there. A few shots after the bell. I don't think they were damaging, but he was a little bit surprised, Larry. Yeah, well, Miracle Max or Dirty Max, uh, it's now a surprise, Max. We're going to see that again right at the bell. And we'll give Valdez the benefit of the doubt that he didn't hear it as he pushes Cohen toward his corner. Right about there, the bell rang. And Max is smart enough to keep the gloves up even though the round was officially over. And a pretty good shot there, that right hand, the last right hand you saw before the one that missed. From Valdez, we're back live, awaiting round three of the scheduled 15 round bout. Tim Ryan and Larry Merchant reminding you to stay tuned on NBC for the American Airlines tennis games, the final, Roscoe Tanner and Jimmy Connors. Tomorrow night here on NBC, the NCAA basketball final. Indiana and Michigan, two big 10 teams. Going for it all. Cohen, good left hook. Very quick with it. The punch we talked about. Rossing with a right class for Rick. That's hooked by Valdez. As he caught Cohen, he's right above us. He came over that left hook with a tremendous right cross. Cohen is all right. Smart punch from Valdez in that situation. Round three, and they've been throwing plenty of leather here in the early going. This one going the way we expected. A warning, I believe, for a low blow from the referee, Marcello Bertini. Warning to Valdez. Boxers are fighting in flurries. Valdez landing with the left of the nose of Cohen. Nose reddening somewhat. Here in round three. Most of the fighting being done in the middle of the ring. Valdez very good at cutting off the ring. Counter punching by Cohen against that long left hook from Valdez. Clancy works with Valdez consistently to make that ring a little bit smaller. 19 square feet. This particular ring here at the Paviano Cari. We're in the final minute of round number three. 
Right now, Valdez is two square feet, and he just has no, absolute no regard for his punch. Knocked down, and he's knocked down his ball who claimed he uh, slipped, and that appeared to be a slip to me. No, I thought it was a right hand that landed flush, and then he slipped as he went down, and his foot got tangled in the lowest strand of the, of the ring. So he had to take the count nonetheless. Left hook staggered Cohen from Valdez. Good left hook. I don't think Cohen is out of it. He seems to be together with himself. He knows what he's, where he is at. Right, right down. down. He's down. A tremendous right cross from Valdez. Tremendous right cross. Cohen on his knees. And he is apparently all right watching that count. And he, he is up. Ten seconds left in round three. And there's the bell with less than 10 seconds as the round expired. And Cohen gets out of trouble there as he was knocked down twice officially. And uh, Larry, you may be right. I, he was blocking my view. You had a little better angle. And that may indeed have been a knockdown punch. Uh, the one I thought was a slip. Let's see what we can see here on replay. I think this is the first knockdown. There it is. No, no, this, uh, I believe, is, uh, is the last knockdown, that, that right cross coming up here. Let's see. That's it. Yes, that's the last knockdown. There was no doubt about that. The second knockdown, a crossing right hand from Valdez in the far corner. Terrific shot by the champion. And Cohen, as we look into his corner, appears to be alert, bright-eyed, and uh, prepared uh, very much so to continue as we look at Valdez, who must have a burst of confidence now, awaiting the beginning of round four. It seemed to me all along, Timmy, that he's been confident. He really hasn't shown much respect for Cohen's punch at all. We're in the fourth round. Left jab by Cohen. Caught Valdez coming in, but Valdez, but Valdez comes right back on him. Good right hand from Cohen counterpunching. Cohen cut near the nose. Takes a good left hook from Valdez. Valdez just throwing punches right through the defense of Max Cohen. Left hook to the midsection. Brought him down momentarily. Brought the hands down. Fourth round action in this middleweight championship fight. Continuing right on the pace set by the heavyweight Ernie Shavers and Henry Clark earlier here on NBC. You're seeing this Battle bout live via satellite from Paris. Overhand right by Valdez and Cohen ducked under it. Domination by Cohen, but neatly blocked by the left hand of Rodrigo Valdez. Valdez, the black man in red trunks, now at the top of your screen. Missed with that right hand. Very good. Very good. Cohen's combination seem to be falling short as Rodrigo Valdez anticipates them, pulls back away from the power of the punch. Light cut under the chin in the first round. Closing out round four here from Paris. Seconds remaining. Going on the ropes again. The extra miles the average car will get from a tank full of gasoline.
by changing to a new, higher priced synthesized motor oil that reduces friction so well, it... He just simply threw up his hands. He knew he was a beaten man here in the fourth round. A TKO for the champion, Rodrigo Valdez, that admittedly caught us by surprise here as we were trying to hear if the bell had rung. It was near the end of the round, but it was simply Max Cohen saying, I've had enough. I can't handle this man's power. And Valdez retains his WBC middleweight championship. And no doubt, that will produce now a showdown between Valdez and Carlos Hanzo. And the crowd here are on their feet in appreciation for the victory by the powerful Rodrigo Valdez. And it may be the end of the road for the 35-year-old Max Cohen, certainly his last opportunity at a world title. Larry Merchant is in the ring and We'll uh, try to get to uh, Gil Clancy, the manager of responsibility.